guys. So I decided that next week I'm going to do two, uh, a bee and a dragonfly that are the same as the bird. And this week I'm going to go ahead and give you what you want, which is to do the three little birdies um, in watercolor. So anyway, I have a, a big auction plan tomorrow. I wanted to have one similar. Um, so I'm not going to do this exact one because I don't like to duplicate what I've already done unless I absolutely have to and I want somebody to know that they got something that's super original. So I'm going to do something else with these three guys though. So it's going to still have these guys, but it'll just be a little bit different. And I'm just going to make it up as I go right now, which is exactly how I paint. And hopefully is how you guys will get to the point where you don't really have to have a plan. You can just kind of um, play it by ear. So I'm going to grab a pencil. This is a 0.3 pencil. My friend Stacia turned me on to the tiny, tiny leads and I really love them. You can get them at jetpens.com. Um, I'm sure Amazon has them or, you know, any place that you can buy art supplies. So I just tend to buy my Posca pens at Jet Pens and then um, some other, a few of other things. Um, and so I just throw in, you know, some Posca pens, a 0.3, just whatever I need at the time. So jet pens is great. Hopefully my camera will stay focused. It's kind of doing funny stuff this morning. So these three little guys, I always think about birds as starting as an egg. And so they are pretty close to that original egg shape. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and think about what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with this guy kind of up here. And I'm just going to make an egg shape, but it's not a perfect circle. It's a little jaggedy. Um, and then I'm going to go in a little bit here for the body and out and I'm gonna leave them pretty pretty close to that let me go grab my eraser really quick this is a gummy eraser um, you don't want to do a ton of erasing on on watercolor paper that's just kind of a general rule so if you're uncomfortable with your drawing skills you might want to draw it somewhere else and then trace it onto um, onto paper or onto your watercolor paper after with transfer paper okay so that's that little guy and I think I want to make them up and down like jaggedy like not straight across so um, this guy I'm going to put here and he's, this one is extra fat, holy cow. Okay. Okay. Well, he's going to be a really chubby bird. That's okay. I like chubby birds. I'm kind of a chubby bird lately anyway. <laughs> okay. I really have gained weight since Andrew passed away, um, which I'm not super happy about, but I'm not really doing much about it either, so. Um, let's see. And then, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put in some branches here. I hope you can see my little lines. The reason why I'm putting in branches is to kind of give me an idea of what I want to do and if I want to add that third bird or not. I really do like him with in the mix, but sometimes you just have to decide, you know, based on composition, what's going to be best. And um, 
And so even though you may have an idea, you may have to change it around a bit. Okay. So I'm going to make my egg over here on the side. I really think my camera is struggling today. I'm sorry if it is. I'm going to kind of get you in closer here. Okay, so this guy is going to be over here. And he's the same. He kind of has an indent there. Um... So they're almost like little jelly beans. <laughs> if you hear my neurotic dog in the background, sorry, he's hanging out with me in my studio today and he's making a lot of noise over there. Okay, so this, this guy is going to need a branch. And I'm going to put him behind everybody else. He's a little bit smaller, so um, he may look farther away. We will see. So then on this guy, where that little indent is, um, I'm going to put kind of a long skinny beak on him. And then um, his eye was kind of almost like a little bit below his beak. Like it's at his beak, but then even kind of lower. Um, so he's kind of a strange looking fella. This guy's beak is right in the center. And it's like a long diamond or a sideways diamond or, you know, however you want to look at it. But pretty much. And then his eyes are right next to that beak. And then this guy right here too. And you can adjust that as you go. I mean, you may decide that they're looking strange or whatever and it bothers you. I mean, you just decide what you want. Okay, so yeah, I decided next week I would do both of the last two uh, bugs because they're so similar that I hate to span it out any longer. And that will give you more of a full lesson. Um, and it will give you your three, your three bugs, so you're set. Um, that's kind of how I decided to put it. And everybody was loving the little birds, so I just thought we'd go with it. And then also I figured, you know... I would give you one more lesson of watercolor in case you decided you wanted to jump in on flow and whether this was something that you were interested in um, doing more watercolor. So let's see here. I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab my watercolor brush. Okay, I'm going to have to look at my colors because um, I got this new color and this is the color that everybody is just um, dying over on Facebook um, and it's really worth dying over to be honest. It's really fun. It's called Fuchsite Genuine and it's by Danielle Smith and then in the darker areas of the birds I'm using Ultramarine Turquoise by Danielle Smith. So this one is almost glittery looking and it's made up of ground up stone. It's super cool. So anyway, those are the two that I'm using. Those two colors. And you can get these at, in a smaller size than what I bought them in. Um, 
anywhere online basically. Okay, so I'm getting my fuchsite really wet. Water is your friend in, wa in watercolor. So I'm getting it super wet so that there's a nice little puddle here. Can you see the puddle? So that there's enough that I can keep grabbing off of that and that um, there's not going to be like thicker and thinner paint. It's, it's like a nice little pool of paint there. And I'm going to try hard to get in without going on the beak because the beak is orange and um, orange and blue make mud. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to get around it with this point of, of, of this watercolor brush, which is a number eight. Now I think I'll probably decide to go in with another, there we go, we kind of got it going now. Um, you can go over the eyes if you want to because those are going to be black and you won't see really this color in there. But yeah, try to stay away from the beak. And then go ahead and do that with the other two birds, that same fuchsia color. Okay, so then it's very important with watercolor to let the watercolor that you just put on there dry before you go into anything that's next to it. So because everything on here is kind of next to the birds, I'm not going to touch this again until these are all dry and where I need them to be. So we're going to pause the video, we're going to wait for it to dry, and then we're going to come back. Okay, so these guys have dried and I'm going to go ahead and put beaks on them. I'm just going to use um, one of these tripless Stapler Fine liner pens um, because it's just super easy inside of their little beaks to do it. And I bought them recently and I think they're fun and I just wanted to show you. Um, you have to be really careful with these pins. I did the one painting with the leaves in the background and did all kinds of neat leaves and then they really, really, really bled. So I kind of had to just work with it and, um, and just make that, you know, what the painting was going to do. That's one of the really important things to learn about art too is that you know, you can either get upset about your mistakes or you could just add it to the drama of the painting. <laughs> and so anyway, um, I just went ahead and went with it and let it be smeary and then went back over with harder lines. Okay, so their little beaks are done. Um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and their eyes with the black and when I did this in the original one these kind of smeared too and I went with it and then I went back and added more black so kind of the same thing like just you know if they get messed up a little bit don't get super frustrated don't um, overwork it like the most important thing about watercolor is that it looks like 
it was done effortlessly. Like that's kind of like super loose, not, not any, um, overworking. That's, that's one of the, the biggest things about watercolor is that you kind of have to make it look like it's just, you know, was just super easy, just threw some paint on there and it was no big deal. Of course we know that's not true, right? But you know, that's what the illusion is. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back in with my little pen, wherever that went, my pencil that I showed you earlier. And on these guys, I just put in some little scribbly lines around the edges so that they look fluffy. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then also add in some wing lines. So um, let's see, on this guy, the wing line is like right here and right here. And then um, all the way around the edges, I'm just like scribbling kind of like you know just kind of making a mess of it let's see okay so can you see what I'm doing here I'm just kind of giving them some little scribbly hairs everywhere and then I gave them some some lines so this guy, same thing. I'm going to give him like some little, a little wing here. And then I'm going to just give him like little, um, silly, cute squiggle, squiggles all the way around. And then I did put a line in their mouths here and it's a little bit darker at the bottom. So I'm just going to darken that with my pencil a little bit. Um, same thing with this guy. I'm just going to do my line across and then darken it with the pencil. So it still looks orange. It just is like more of a shadow color. And then this guy too. And then his wing is kind of under his eye and then goes around. And I just kind of make a like a move movement like with my hands you know just kind of a shaky movement as I go around the edges with this number three pencil okay so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into that turquoise color that I told you about at the beginning and I'm gonna add in areas that are more shadowy. So right underneath their wings here is going to be some shadow. And I'm going to do the line that I'm going into my water, getting some clear water, drying it off a little bit and just kind of um, softening that line. So that's important to kind of get that line softened up. Um, I did around their eyes kind of like let it bleed a little bit out so they kind of had like a messy eye thing so you could just do that if you don't have the pen like you could just do that with a darker you know like a Payne's gray whatever gray blue color you have so they just kind of have some shadow around their eyes and then I'll go back in with the black again um, let's see, what else did I do with this guy? So, this guy, I went ahead and made his head a little bit darker. So you can kind of just decide on each bird what you want to do. Um, so then I'm going back in with the water and softening up that line there. And just bringing down that color. So wherever your water is, that's where your watercolor is going to move. And then I'm going to give him a little shadow here. He sure got a big head. <laughs> These guys are so funny. So uh, goofy looking. Okay, and then the other guy has a shadow right here. 
I'm just kind of, like I said before, it's very loose. Like you just want to look like, and even, you know, part of it is an attitude too, right? Like you just kind of decide that you're just going to do it loose and you're not going to care. I mean, that's really the, um, the key, you know, is that you're just, you just don't really care. You know, you're just doing it. You're having fun. You're not worrying about it. Okay, so around his eyes, I'm going to let it bleed a little bit. Um, he has kind of a shadow here. This guy's eyes need to be a little messy. Okay, so they're really kind of messy and scribbly and I'm gonna let them dry for a while and then we'll go back to what we were. Okay, so we are ready to put in the lines for the, for the tree branches. I'm gonna go ahead and use some Payne's Gray. Actually, scrap that. I'm gonna use, um, like some burnt umber through there. And I'm not worried too much about if it looks kind of um, messy. So usually with watercolor, you kind of want it all to like the first layer to kind of go on really smooth and I'm not really worried about that because they're tree branches right and um, it doesn't have to be super smooth looking I'm just laying the color on and I'm pushing it um, and using it as much as I can on what I have on this brush and then just reloading kind of sticking with the top of the branch and then pulling color down to the bottom so I'm going along that top line and then I'm going to go in my water here and just pull it to where it needs to be, if that makes sense. And I'm allowing the water just to pool up in there because that's going to give some interesting effects. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just throw a little bit of gray in there while the water's doing its thing so that it'll kind of move around in there if you see what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that with all the tree branches here. You know, it's really funny because um, these last couple bird paintings have been really fun. I went to San Francisco and enjoyed my brother's play, but I really love these three guys because it really represents um, how I've been feeling lately about friendship and, and, um, you know, I've collaborated a lot with friends lately and I've enjoyed my friendships and I just think, you know, being a part of a strong community and being a part of, um, like these art groups is so important. And I just keep hearing that over and over again from people that they are, so blessed by these communities, so blessed by people encouraging them, and I just really appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that as I've been really busy and dealing with other things, that you guys really do pick up the slack on Birds and the Bees, and you encourage each other, and you're there for each other, and it's just, it's super, super cool to watch. I really, really love it. Um... And I really appreciate you guys. And I'm sorry that lately um, I've been a little bit quieter. I have I have flow that's kind of started. And then um, we have another gallery that just went up, which is exciting. If you're interested in selling your work, um, let me know. If you haven't already heard, I'm surprised if you haven't. Because <laughs> it suddenly blew up a couple days ago. But um, So, you know, if you have any questions, certainly just tag me in a post because then I get a notification. So a lot of times I feel really bad because I've gone on Birds and the Bees and realized that I haven't responded to everybody. And a lot of that is just because I just haven't seen your posts. I get so much across Facebook lately that um, it's hard to see. So if you really want me to see something, just uh, start typing my name and it'll tag me 
in the post. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry and come back to it. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead with the Posca pin that we love and just put in some white lines in their little wings here. And I'm not even sure if you can see this, but I think you guys are pretty good at this part at this point. So I'm just kind of doing the same thing that we always do. Um, just some little lines there. They're pretty light colored, so um, the lines don't show up as well. So you might, like I think I might go in with a darker pen um, to create some darker lines. I'm gonna go in back into the eyes and um, darken, darken the little areas that we blurred out. And then um, put our little dots in there. And I'm going to give them just a little bit of a line around their eyes. Like that. Um, I think I'm going to take a darker pen and go in around their wings here. Um, that's not really dark enough. So this is just a gray pen, but I feel like they need like more wing lines. I don't super love that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my other watercolor brush and just kind of blur that out a little bit. So I'm not loving the dark lines as much, so I'm not going to do it on the other ones. So I may even go in with a little bit of a darker um, turquoise color so that my white lines show up a little bit better. In that area. Okay, so really, um, the last step to this will be, so this is a number 12 brush. If you don't have a big brush like this, don't even worry about it. Like just use the biggest brush you can. I'm just adding water in this background here because I'm gonna put in some blues for sky. And what'll happen is it'll kind of crystallize and do its own thing and it'll look a little bit like clouds when it dries out. So I'm getting it all wet and then I'm gonna go in to I think a little bit of cobalt blue and dioxazine purple. They're kind of two of my favorite um, combinations. And I'm just gonna put in some blue and let it do its thing. Back behind these guys. Just kind of let it move however it feels like moving. And 
then I'll do it. I'll do that in between here, which is skinnier, so I'm using a smaller brush. This is probably going to be dark. Oh, that's not too bad. So I'm adding a little bit more purple in there. So basically you're just going to do that um, all in the background here. Just add little touches of the cobalt and that dioxazine purple or whatever blue and purple you have or just blue. I mean it's up to you. So I just really like that color, color com combination. And then I'm going to go back into my big brush because I can add a lot of water all at once. I'm just kind of loosely throw it on there. I do, you know, I mean the one thing about having big brushes though is that um, with watercolor, you know, as I said, like you kind of want it to be really loose. And with big brushes, you just kind of can't help it but to be pretty loose because it's so big and, you know, the control is less. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and then we'll go back in and just do all of our finishing touches. Okay, so let's wrap these guys up. Um... I'm going to go back through with my white line like I said I was going to now that I darkened the wings. I'm not making them exactly perfect like I have on some of the other ones. Like I'm just kind of making dashes on there. I'm going to go ahead in the eyes and um, I'm going to instead of putting the white pen, I'm going to go ahead and put kind of a darker dot of, um, of white acrylic because my pen keeps disappearing on top of that ink and I want to make sure it sticks around. Let's see. Okay, I'm just going to use the tip of a pen to make the little dot. Okay. Um, and I think might go over my little squiggle lines again with my pencil. I might even do it with this this pen. I just love these pens, really. They are great for watercolor. They blend out really nice and I love the tiny line. So I'm just giving them a couple more squiggly lines here. Um, touching up around the mouth. And their 
they're looking pretty cute. I think I'll give um, maybe a little highlight on top here of the mouth. Um, I'll go ahead and just add a little bit of pink with this pen and then I'll just blend it out a little bit just under the cheek to give it a little bit of blush or you know they kind of look like boys so we won't call it blush <laughs> but see how nice that is like the pens these pens are really nice um, to use with the watercolor because they're they're water soluble they're not nice if you want the line to stay where it is. So I learned that the hard way, but you know, sometimes you just gotta go with it. Okay. Um, I think I will put a little bit of a dark line at the very top here just kind of a squiggle line um, at the top of each of the branches, kind of like we did on the other one, just some texture there to make it look like an actual tree branch. And then I'll throw some white in there. Can you see what I'm doing? paying attention to that. Um, I'm just throwing a little bit of white in there. This is a pretty easy lesson. Um, it's really cute for a card or something for a friend. Um, I don't know. It's just super cute. So anyway, um, I will see you next week with two more paintings and the end of our birds and the bees lessons. Talk to you soon. Bye.